All um, right, we are recording. So this is, I guess, technically our first team call. I've done lots of training videos, and I've done calls with just my personally sponsored coaches, but I hope that these calls can help bring our whole team together and give you guys a chance to some days listen to tips from other coaches, some days listen to tips from me, and just an outlet for you guys to ask questions and get answers and all of that. So, sorry, my dog wanted to get off the bed. <laughs> um, so before we get started today, I did just want to cover the August Challenge Pack promotions, if you're not aware of them. They are, one of them is size. You can get the size Challenge Pack for $140, or the size Kickstart, which is size plus Shakeology plus the three-day refresh for $180. Or you can get the three-day refresh in Chicology for $140. So those are the ones that are available all of August. And then the 21-day fix and 21-day fix extreme are both $140 until August 12th. So if you have any stragglers that wanted 21-day fix in the past and they still haven't gotten it yet, they have until the 12th to get it on sale. Other than that, then it'll go back up to the normal price, which is $160. Um, I think that is it for the promotions. Any questions on that? Or on size or, or Who has the train in the background? <laughs> um, I have a quick question. Sure. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, if, if I have some stragglers, so I have a couple people who bought the 21 day fix on like Amazon or something. Um, any strategies for getting them to commit to the challenge pack before the sale is over? So they already got 21 day fix from Amazon? Yeah, so they got like whatever the $60, you know, like not a challenge pack. Yeah. Have um, they started it already? No. Oh, okay. Um,. So this happened to me once before, and that person actually reached out to me and said that she bought it on Amazon, was asking what the difference was between getting it through yeah. Amazon or through me. When yeah. that happens, I basically tell them that it's not much of a discount, because if you look on Amazon and compare it, it is the same as what you can get through a coach. Mm -hmm. uh, when you order through a coach, you get so much more. You get yourself as a coach. You can right. join the challenge group because I don't let people in my groups if they don't purchase yeah. from from me, really. So they get to join you, and then with that group, they get meal plans and recipes and grocery lists and accountability and stuff. So just break apart the little things about the groups mm -hmm. that they would get, and that's what I use to leverage the value of signing up with you. And okay. then and just talk about Shakeology. Like, yeah. I think 21 Day Fix is always going to be the, one of the most valuable programs we have as of right now because you can get everything, Shakeology plus the entire program, for the price of Shakeology alone after shipping. So, like, that alone is just, like, a no-brainer for me. So, tr I would say, like, the benefits of Shakeology and what you like about Shakeology mm -hmm. and that you can get everything for the price of Shakeology. Yeah. So okay, cool. That's what works for me, just talking about breaking it apart about what's in a challenge pack and what comes with you as a coach. Right. Okay. You know what, Samantha? I had the same, um, a similar issue where somebody brought up the infomercial and said, oh, well, I got it off the infomercial. Can I join your challenge group? So. so when you get it off of the infomercial, they are randomly assigned to a coach. So in that situation, since they did get it through Beachbody, I would allow them in my group after they switch to you as a coach. Mm -hmm. Do you know how to get them to switch to you? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, so just have them switch. Unfortunately, it's not the challenge pack, but I used to be very strict about needing a challenge pack and needing Shakeology, but I'm a little bit more lenient now because – they'll still see results of 21 day fix. And if you build that relationship and allow them in, then they might want to try Shakeology next or want to try coaching. So I would still let them in once they switch to you as their coach. That's, that's what I did. Yeah. Okay. Good. <laughs> Any other questions about that? Okay. 
Okay. Great. So the next thing before we get into question and answer is the new coach training group. This is not only for new coaches, it's for that I'm in it. So I'm still learning everything and I'm a one star diamond coach. So you don't have to be new. It's called the, um, something Academy, Entrepreneur Academy. So if you guys are not in it, I highly recommend joining it because it's only been like four days now. It's technically started on Monday and there are so many good resources in there from the very basics of like I watched today how to take a selfie to actual documents that you can use to make sure that you're posting every day, to keep track of the people that you're talking to, to keep track of the promotions that we just mentioned the basics that will get you far in the business. So if you're not in the group, definitely join it. And I, if you don't have the link to it, just message me after and I can give it to you. Another cool thing is that there's the cash pot. So anyone that reaches diamond by the time the group ends, it's a two month group. So by the time the group ends, um, at the very end of September, I think it's the first week of October. If you hit diamond rank, then you split the cash pot. Right now, it's a little bit over $1,000, so, and I know, I think two people hit diamonds today, so each person right now, if they hold rank, is getting $500, so you can definitely get in on that. The last day to join the cash pot, though, is tomorrow, so if you haven't already, you should do that, um, and there's instructions in the files tab for that. How many people do you need to bring into the business as coaches to be diamond? So you need eight coaches. You need four coaches on each leg, your right leg and your left leg, and one of those need to be an emerald. And an emerald is having two coaches. And that can be a discount coach, so people that sign up just for discounts, or it can be somebody that wants to actually work the business. And they all have to be brought in in these two months, or could they be pre-existing? Pre-existing, you just need to reach diamond rank within these two months. So you could start off as a ruby and then just get two more coaches and you'd be diamond. Okay. Yeah. Oops. I saw you have a new coach. Congratulations. Yay. <laughs> yeah, good question. So again, if you're not in there, definitely check it out. It's worthwhile. You can win money. There's lots of resources. And even for those of you that have a really busy schedule, um, it really doesn't take too much time because Mondays are the days that they have the actual training. And I think it's like an hour long video. So that definitely takes time to watch. But throughout the week, they're just posting once per day about a certain topic. So you can either log in once per day to read their post and to take their challenge or just log in every other day, log in on Fridays and do all of the activities. As long as you're picking up the little nuggets of information that they're sharing, then that's all that matters. Okay. So one of the things in particular about the new coach group that I saw was they had you write down your goals for this month. And if you guys haven't done that, I recommend you doing it. And the way that they suggested wasn't simply writing down, I want to reach Emerald Rank, or I want to sell two challenge packs, or hit Success Club. What they had you do is write a letter to yourself that you'll read on August 31st. So you say, Dear Sam, um, this month was an amazing month. I had an awesome challenge group. It was my first challenge group ever. It was really engaging and I had five awesome people in it. I also hit success club. I also made $500 a week. I also signed up two coaches. So act as if it's already happened so that you're kind of setting yourself up for success because it is a goal and you're going to reach it. And on August 31st, you'll look back and hopefully you'll be able to say, yep, all of those things happened. So I just thought that was a cool way to think about it is to write it down as if it's already happened. So if you haven't done that, I do suggest it. I wrote mine down somewhere in my binder here. Here we go. So on August 31st, I'll reflect back on what an amazing month I've had. And I have like a little paragraph about it. It's silly, but just something that I think helps motivate people. So give it a try. 
Okay, so question and answer time. Um, I do have some already that people have submitted, but those people are not here yet, so or they're not logging on at all. So I'll answer your guys' questions first, and then time permitting, we can get into the other ones. So what do you have for me? <laughs> it's going to be about anything. Um, new challenge groups, how to handle certain conversations, um, what sizes, how to overcome objections. All right. Well, I don't want to overwhelm you because I apparently have been doing something with my challenge groups that people don't usually do as new coaches. Um, I'm on my fourth 21-day fix um, challenge group. And my folks from my first group hadn't reached their goals and so I just said well come on into the next one and then those two groups then melded into the third group which then melded into this giant challenge group that I've got going now so I've got my veterans and then I've got my newbies but I gotta take and, and I didn't know you weren't supposed to do that but I did because I made it up <laughs> but but um What's happening is that the veterans are kind of surfacing as coaches in the way that they're supporting and giving um, advice to the newbies. And they're kind of doing their own question and answer and coming along. Um, I, I didn't know I wasn't supposed to do that. So what I'm doing now, um, for the, in the end of August, I'm going to start yet another 21-day challenge. Um, and what I did is inside the group, I just said, um, I said, you guys that are in your third and fourth round, um, you could teach this now. Why don't, I'm going to invite you into my, um, my closed group, whatever you call it. Your, not your like page, but the other one. Um, because I'm, I'm still inspiring and motivating through that. I said, but you're certainly welcome to rejoin in. So I've... <laughs> I still have a handful of them that want to continue on with the group. So my challenge is kind of how to handle this giant group. Um, the older ones, I shouldn't call them older, the veterans are not as vocal. There's a handful of them that are. Um, but I can't kick them out because they still are enjoying the um, accountability and the motivation. So I'm kind of caught in a sticky spot. But... It doesn't seem like it's failing yet. Yeah. I was going to say, like, none of that seems wrong to me. Like, you right. said a couple times you're not supposed to do that. The cool thing about coaching is that you can really do whatever you want. And what works for most people may not work for you. Or you may be the first person ever to try that. And before you know it, all of your coaches are doing that. And all of the rest of our team is doing that. So when you were saying, like, what you were doing, I feel like that's brilliant because – those veteran coaches are getting the experience. Some are a fly on the wall. Others are getting the experience to actually teach a group and do it on their own and inspire others. And that gives you the opportunity to then reach out to those people that are helping others and saying, you know, you're doing awesome. You're motivating so many people. Have you ever thought of becoming a coach? Mm -hmm. You know, and, so. that's, and that's what I've done. I, I, I grew my, um, my great muscle on um, the last couple of days and I've been reaching out to the ones that are really kind of outstanding um, and, and and actually I have three people that are like can I get together and ask you questions I see that as a real green light yeah so I just wanted to know if you know am, am, am I heading down a path of self-destruction by doing this or is following my gut on this one yeah, so this is what I see happening is um, I foresee you getting a lot of coaches that way because the veterans one will either, like I said, be a fly on the wall. And I have those two, like these people who I've been working with for a year now that still want to join my groups, which is fine, and I let them in. And then these other ones, they will want to start coaching, and then they won't once they're a coach, I would not add them in your groups unless it's their first one and they want to like see how it goes, yep. but then they'll run it there. They'll run their own, you know, yep. or yep. they'll just stop it. They'll fall off and they'll stop. So I think it's fine. And the people right. that are just a fly on the wall or that aren't participating or just stop 
participating all together, add them into your free group so that they still get motivated and whatnot. And you yep. can still recruit new people every month. But I think it's totally fine adding past yep. challengers into your new groups for well, that reason. like it. And you know what? They're not, I mean, a few people have dropped off and I'm expecting that. Mm -hmm. um, but, but, but the ones that are still in are still <laughs> drinking their Shakeology. They're still ordering. Um, and out of the ones that are like my fourth rounders, they're the ones that are jumping over to my, um, I'm going to do a three month Shalene extreme program. And while, while what I said was, I don't require that you, um, drink Shakeology list, but I strongly encourage it. So, you know, they're, they're buying, they're buying the Shalene extreme, but they're going to stay on, or stay on the Shakeology. So. I don't know. It's working. So. Yeah. I mean, and that's the thing. It's working for you. So I say keep doing it. I love that idea. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Good question. Thanks. We sure. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll ask another question. Do you have something? Is your name Melissa? Were you going to say something? Well, you can go ahead. No, go no, ahead. no. Go, 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 go. I just, I don't like silence. So I just start. <laughs> I don't want to like jump ahead of anyone. I'm folding my laundry, so sorry. Um, um, I feel like I'm finally getting. A, I think I like posted this. Like a, I don't know if it's like a direct question, but I could use some input. Um, I'm like feeling stronger about people like seeing my posts, even when they don't um like comment or like. I notice that they're at least seeing them, which I think is um like the goal, right? Like even when they don't um like say something to me directly, people are like noticing that I'm doing it, whether they are like saying something sarcastically about me coaching or working out all the time or um, people like the people who bought the 21 day fix, like followed up and said like, Hey, I saw you're a coach. Like I want to know what the difference was just like you said earlier, Sam. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't, I'm like struggling with the uh, moving from people talking to me about it to getting them to purchase. Yeah, I do remember seeing your, your post about that. So where is the conversation stopping? Are you saying like, like, what are you saying before it just kind of the conversation fizzles out? Um, sometimes I feel like it gets to the, um, like the price part and that's where I'm hearing objections for sure. Okay. Um, but other times like it's like they're interested, but it doesn't get into like I, it gets into like the, me talking about what I'm doing and then them talking about their lives and how they're interested and I can't make it move towards like, um, let's talk about how to get you more involved or like I talk, ask them what their goals are and then I mention the programs and that kind of stops even before I tell them the price. Maybe they look it up themselves using my link, but yeah. um, so I guess it's stopping at different points, but I could see it being a price mm -hmm. objection no matter where I am in the conversation. And do you follow up with those people at all? Mm -hmm. okay. Not, not that much. I mean, so like sometimes I'll like say, do you like, do you have any questions? But I feel like I don't. I need a better follow up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I think it's all in the follow up. Because people right. definitely end their conversation. Like once they hear the price, sometimes people are like, absolutely not, or not this yeah. month. Sometimes people ignore you completely, and so. I think what you're experiencing is normal as long as you're mentioning like the value and everything that they're getting in a challenge pack first yeah. and then the price. Yeah. Um, a lot of people are just need to think about it. And sometimes they forget to type. I'll think about it and let you know. Yeah. Uh, sometimes they do just ignore you, but I think that that's normal. And the same thing with like, if it gets off topic and they start talking about themselves, I think that's fine because it's more important to build a relationship at first than to jump, even if they start message you first and they're like, tell me about 21 Day Fix. If yeah. they go off on like telling you about their life, I think that's fine. It's okay. all about the follow up. So I would follow up with either one of those scenarios like two days later, probably. And I'd follow up first, I'd go on their page and I'd see what they're up to. So I'd see if they posted a picture or if somebody else posted on their wall. Yeah. And I'd open with that. Like I saw you posted that you went to yoga today. How was mm -hmm. class? Or the photo you posted was really pretty. I don't know. Yeah. I saw somebody that like posted a picture of her omelet. 
And I was like, oh my God, what's the recipe for your omelet? I'd never make them, <laughs> which I don't, but it was just like such an awkward entry. Anyway, so just find like something that's not, have you thought about the price yet or anything like that? Right, right. Then your next thing that you can say is, oh, I was wondering, have you had time to think about the 21 day fix and if it's a good fit for you? Yeah. So, okay. yeah, does that help? Yeah, it does. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I guess just don't rush the conversation, ease into it, take your follow-ups. Yeah. I'm probably worried vomiting, so that, that yeah. <laughs> yeah. Take your time. They say um, in the book, Go For Now, Go For No, it says, I think it takes five, to five follow-ups before they actually commit, so okay. take your time. Okay, cool. That helps. Thank you. Yeah. I have a question. Um, we've already kind of talked a little bit about this. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Okay, good. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Um, that for now, like I'm a pretty new coach. I just signed up actually a week ago and a lot of the people I'm reaching so far are people who are already in my friends list, like relatives and friends and stuff. And I've actually gotten quite a few uh, messages from people I haven't talked to in a while saying, on the beach body project or uh, products they were trying them etc i i worry that i'm going to come across too strong with already having all the posts and then going from like the previous question that she just asked about feeling like you're talking and genuinely caring about their interests and what they want to do and their goals and then switching over to okay let's buy something and i don't want to freak people out by you know establishing a social media presence as a coach really quickly and then having these people reach out to me and then freak them out by trying to sell them something. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so I heard something today that I think relates perfectly. I, I think, oh, I was listening to the national wake up call from Monday. I just got to it today. And she said that if you are genuine and real and believe in the products, then you'll never come across as salesy. And I think that that's true because, first of all, in your scenario, people are reaching out to you, which is pretty awesome. So you know that they're interested. And then if you're taking the time to learn about their goals, that shows that you're interested in them and helping them succeed. And so the only logical next step after they say that they're interested and you say that you can help them is saying how you can help them. So maybe instead of saying, um, I think 21 day fix would be perfect for you. And here's why you could just say, based on your goals, I feel like 21 day fix would be the perfect program for you. Have you ever heard of it and make it more of like a question? Yeah. Like a conversation. Then, yeah. Like a conversation, not like, not word vomiting. Like Melissa said, just take it slow. Say what programs you think would be best. Ask if she's heard of it. Usually they say no. Sometimes they say yes. Um, and then say what's in it. And then does that interest you? And then they're usually like, yeah, but what's the cost? Then you can share the cost. So it's, it doesn't have to be everything all at once, you know, ask questions, make sure that that's the right program for them. Ask about their nutrition, like things like that. And you're in a unique situation. They're reaching out to you, which shows that they're interested. It's more, I never hear that from new coaches. Usually it's, they're the ones initiating conversations all together. So you're in a good position to go for it. Well, it's good because the ones I friended, I'm still afraid to message them. So, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I mean, it knew, expanding your network is scary at first. I totally understand. I didn't even do it for like the first probably three, four months maybe because I had a solid friend list, I'd say, not of people that I've talked to, but of friends. And it's scary kind of putting yourself out there for strangers to see, but it's worth it for your business. And you never know, your new friends may just see your posts and then comment on it or like them and then you can reach out to them too that way. It's easier if they like your stuff because you can just say, hey, I saw you liked it. Right. But. Um, speaking of, like, expanding your network, have you uh, – I know a lot of people have, like, blogs and things like that, and I, I want to just figure out a way to try and expand my network outside of just my face, like, try and pull people in besides just my friends group um, on Facebook, and I'm not quite sure – how to go about that. Yeah. So there's lots of different ways, and I suggest picking one to two ways. 
Um, if you've already had Facebook down and you want to do that, then you can look into maybe two other ways that you can expand your network. And the ways that I do it on Facebook is I use the search bar at the top of the page and I type in people that I would want as clients. So I would type in, for some reason it works with like if you do a single person, so like woman under 40 that likes spinning or that likes Biggest Loser or woman that lives in Boston that likes yoga. Those are like the typical ones. You can do anything, like not even likes, maybe just wear sailor. Sorry. Like maybe like where they live or something. Um, so that's what I do in Facebook. And then I, a lot of people show up and I go through and I add about five people. And I look for people that I have very few mutual friends with, like five or less. And also those mutual friends are not coaches because a lot of the times they'll see you have one mutual friend, but it's Raina Odell or like somebody that they, another coach that they follow. I send them a message or I send them a friend request and then a message along with it. I just copy and paste it and I say, Hey, I saw that we have a couple mutual friends and some common interests. So I thought it would be great to connect. So that's what I do on Facebook. Um, recently I've been getting into Pinterest. Do you have a Pinterest account? Yeah, I, I'm not, I'm good at pulling things. I don't really know how to communicate on there. Yeah, I just learned it after one of our National Lake of Calls. I like am barely even on Pinterest, but apparently what you can do is, again, you use the search bar and you search for like, um, gluten-free recipes or yoga stretches, anything really. And then a whole bunch of pins come up and then it says who pinned them. And you can click on the name of the person. And I think it brings you to their board first. So they post it on their like gluten-free board. And then you can click on their name to bring them to their profile. And most people have, are linked their Pinterest to their Facebook. And you can see a little F, the Facebook F next to their name. So you can click that F, it brings you to their Facebook page automatically. And then from there, I send a friend request and send the same exact message. I'll, sometimes I'll customize it and say, um, like I saw your recipes on your gluten-free Pinterest board. I especially loved this one. I would love to connect. And usually people have been so nice on Pinterest doing that. They'll all, I think all of them have accepted my friend request. So that's one of the ones I'm trying out. Um, and then the last one that I personally do is on Instagram, which I think I told you about. I have a file called Su Succeed with Instagram or something. And that's exactly what I do with how I get followers and then get people to join my groups. So, there's also, like, I do have a blog that I'm just starting up. I haven't gained any interest from it yet. Um, I think it's just nice to have a place for me to, like, kind of put all my stuff. I have a YouTube channel that I don't really use. So there's so many different ways that if you want to explore, you can just um, YouTube Beachbody Coaches blogs or how to recruit from YouTube and stuff. And there's so many different ways. But those are the three ideas. Do you have much luck um, promoting challenge groups through Instagram? It depends. I, it depends on the post and when I post it and the text of the post <laughs> so but yeah I mean I get a lot of global interest from from Instagram so a lot of people from like India or the Philippines which right now we can sell products to them but we cannot ship Shakeology so it's kind of like do you want to invest the time in get selling them a program without Shakeology and you wouldn't get success club points so I struggle between that but I do. The way that I get the most success through Instagram is if I include at the bottom the text that says, drop your email below if you're interested, or email me directly at, and then I give them my email. That is the best way that I've seen to recruit. I have seen other people, and I've tried myself, like, comment below, I'm in, or choose me, or something. And that gets traction, but then you ha it's kind of hard to follow up with people on Instagram. Yeah, I, I'm playing with it, but I'm like, I, I'm all over the place with yeah. it. I, I really yeah, don't know what I'm doing. I don't even, there's like direct messages that I'm just learning about on Instagram, so 
There's a lot of things you can do. I always go for the email because once you have their email, then you can connect via email and even find them on Facebook. So, okay, cool. Yeah. And it's interesting because on Pinterest, they say that the best post to grab your attention is like a simple photo that has text, like the text says, 10 ways to lose weight or five day squat challenge or like something right in your face. Whereas Instagram, it's more about the quality of the photo. So it's definitely different like tactics, I guess that you can use based on what you're doing. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Do you have another question, Dee Dee? Yeah, I did, but I don't know what it is. Yet. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, no. <laughs> Okay. So does anyone else have questions before I jump into the, the ones that were posted on our page? Okay. Um, about how do you get people more involved within your challenge groups? Like, um, I just I feel like it's inconsistent when people respond or like, no one will respond to one day, but then another day, everybody's talking on it. And it's just hard to, to figure out what works best and how to get people more involved. It is hard. And I'll be honest, sometimes I have like silent groups to the point where I just end them early because nobody's participating. But there are things you can do. Um, one thing that I like to do is add another coach in my group because then at the very least the coach will respond and people like to participate when more people are participating. So that will hopefully get some more engagement. You can also give away prizes. And what I've been doing recently is getting the packets of E and E energy and endurance. I think it's like $20 for 24 packets. And I just give away one packet and I'll do like a thirsty Thursday challenge where everyone posts about like drinking a lot of water and then I'll choose one random person to win a prize. So you can do prizes or like things like headbands that you can get from like Walmart, things like that. You can also do just like mini challenges, like add in a plank challenge for one day or like see how many push-ups you can do, then comment below, things like that. Or you can also just see what they're responding to. So if one day you see that they're all responding, and it was because you posted a Flex Friday photo, maybe do more challenges like that, like post a selfie below, versus maybe if they're only responding to posts where you say, share your healthy meals, then tailor it more towards that. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, you guys can jump in. I'm just gonna jump into some of the other questions before our time ends. So the first one is, uh, it says two to three posts daily. What types of posts do all posts, do all posts on your personal page? I feel like I'm running out of ideas. So this one is a great question. And there's actually a file in our files tab that has examples of posts. And basically every day it lists five different types of posts. There's a healthy recipe, a workout photo, what you're doing right now. So like I could post a picture of us having a meeting and that could be my post. Um, uh, like something like with your family or your friends or like your animals, whatever. And then one other one that I'm forgetting. It might just be another one, like another healthy recipe or something or like one of your hobbies. So, and it has all of those five and it's just scattered throughout the day. So every morning, you can either do like every morning is always a motivational post. Every afternoon is always your lunch post. Every evening is always a, um, a workout post. And then at the very end of the night, you're going to do a challenge group or a coach recruiting post. So you can keep it standard like that, or you can mix and match it up, which is what the document is where it's different every day, but it's always those five, five things. Also, I don't know if everyone saw it, you can schedule your posts through the Hootsuite app or through every post it's called, that's another app. Those allow you to schedule your posts ahead of time. So if you're working or we have a lot of teachers on our team, so if you're at school all day long or you have a really busy weekend, you can schedule them ahead of time, which is really helpful. 
Number two, do you have a contact list of some sort to keep track of who you talk to and what you've talked to them about? Yes, I won't show it to you guys now because we have two and a half minutes left, but also in the files tab, there, I have something called contact list slash follow-up list. And that is an Excel spreadsheet. I, I choose to do it through Excel because I think it's easier. And I have a list of up top, it says the day of the week, so Monday through Sunday, and who I'm going to follow up with. So Melissa, you were saying that you talked to someone, say today, and they said that they just stopped talking to you after you mentioned the price. I put their name down for Friday or Saturday just to remind myself to update them and to follow up with them. And in the comments, I'll say, we talked about 21 Day Fix. This is why I think it's good for her. She stopped talking or whatever it may be. And then at the very bottom of the Excel tab, I have months. So when people just ignore me completely, I'll move them out to another month. Or if people are having babies, I'll move them out seven months down the road. So I know to reach back out to them when they're going to need someone to get back into their pre-baby body. So and you guys should look at that. And I can reference that and tag you guys in it if you'd like. And since we have less than a minute, I will answer the other questions in our group page. But anything else that you guys have for now? No, thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome. I hope this helped. I'm going to have these weeklies by meetings bi-weekly. So we'll have the next one in two weeks. But if you need anything, I'm always available. So thank you guys for joining. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 See ya. I turn off.